Today's video is editing one of your GoPro photos. Um, so basically, Peter reached out to me on Instagram DMs. He sent me this DM, in fact, and was like, yo, I'll pay you to edit my uh, GoPro photo. And I was like, you know what? You don't need to pay me. I would love to just edit your photo. Please don't everyone send me a million photos now, but I'm just basically creating this tutorial for those of you that are interested in knowing how you can take a GoPro raw file um, and turn it in for something that looks like this and turn it into something which looks like this. Today's video, I wanna take you through how I work in Lightroom and also how I work in Photoshop. So there's two key areas. I'm not gonna bore you with anything. I'm gonna just teach you some really basic tips, which I want you to then apply with your own GoPro photos. So if you guys are keen for that, let's get stuck into it. So I'm sure a few of you are wondering how do you shoot GoPro Raw? It's very simple. Just go into your camera settings uh, on your GoPro, click on the bottom um, and make sure when you click into the settings of the photo, which is the little pencil icon to the right of that drop down menu, you go to the top left, which says output. Now in an, a re just in a normal photo, you have four options. At the very top of the output option, it is super photo. Next from the shot. <coughs> <laughs> choking on myself. Next on the top is HDR, high dynamic range. Basically what that does is it takes a photo overexposed, underexposed, and I'm pretty sure it takes one neutral photo and it combines those three images to give you more dynamic range in the image. Uh, and then output is standard, which is obviously just setting it to JPEG. And if you go right to the bottom, it says raw. I would recommend just setting your GoPro up to shoot in raw for normal photos. Also for bursts, if you're performing actions, GoPro Hero 8 now gives you the ability to shoot all your bursts in raw. I will say though, for those of you that are wanting to set up your raw photos, your bursts in raw, it is gonna take the GoPro about 90 seconds to process if you're doing a 30 frames, 30 photos over six seconds raw burst. If you're doing something which involves wildlife or nature and you want to shoot more rapidly, I wouldn't recommend having 30 frames raw. I would recommend just setting it up to 10 frames over six seconds or 10 frames over three seconds, just so the GoPro is able to process those 10 raw files and then you can keep shooting. This photo, when we were out swimming with manta rays, I had it set up for 30 frames because I was like, you know, it was just preset to that way. And then I'd have to surface to the water, wait for the GoPro to process those 30 images, then go back down. You don't have that time when you're out shooting with manta rays. So yeah, that's just a practical, note just to take on board. All right, so for those of you that are new to Lightroom, Classic um, and Photoshop, uh, I'm not gonna dive too heavily into how you use these, but I will say that you can get a free Creative Cloud trial. So if you are new to them, I would recommend downloading them. I'll put it in the top link of the description um, so you can play along at home. So there's two things that I wanna run you through today. And that is the first is in Lightroom and working with presets. And the second thing is using content aware move and content aware fill in Photoshop. And we're gonna use those two skills to create an image. We're crafting an image as editors today. Open up Lightroom Classic. There's a bunch of presets in the creative panel just over to the left here, which says presets, which you can just start with. And I would highly recommend that's where you start. So if I was to just to choose turquoise and red, which is a preset here, the colors look nice. I'm just gonna choose that. So now I've got my image, I've got a preset on the top of it, and I'll see over and over to the right on the histogram that I can see that in that bottom end, in the dark section of the image, it's like super peaking. And then over in the middle, it's like, it's kind of more balanced. So a way to kind of instantly just balance this out is to have a look over here. And if I just hover over this triangle, it says like, this is super blue, super dark. So what I can do is I can bring those shadows up a bit and it's gonna start to bring away that immediate, look at the histogram. The histogram is now leveling out. So it's more balanced at the bottom. It's more balanced at the top, right? I feel like I'm creating more dynamic range in my colors straight away just by using those two sliders. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm just creating an initial edit. Now, what I wanna teach you guys is if we right click on the image and we edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020, this is where the fun part happens. Now, if you have um, the older version of Adobe Photoshop, now sometimes um, Lightroom will communicate with the older version, um, make sure you've updated it to 2020 because they've put this new feature in 2020, which isn't available in the 2018 one, and that's this. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I like this image, but there's one thing that annoys me. <laughs> it's the sun. Now the sun is just to the right of that hand. What I wanna show you is this really simple tool called Content Aware Move. 
Over here on the left, on this panel of tools, you have this ability, if I click and hold, it might just be preset to the spot healing brush, right? If I click and hold, you'll see that there's five options there for tools. And one of them, the fourth one down is called Content Aware Move. If I click on Content Aware Move um, and I highlight a section, I have the ability to move it anywhere around the image, which is freaking crazy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sun and I'm gonna align it with the mountain. So I'm gonna grab a pretty decent section. Actually, Command D is deselect. I'm gonna come back around here and I might even just bring that so that I've got these lines there up like that. I'm telling Photoshop that I wanna be a little bit more select with my, you know, with the content that I'm choosing to move. And I'm bringing that over here and I'm gonna hit enter. So now that's gonna reposition the sun so it's just more symmetrical with my GoPro image. If I hit command D just so I can have a look and then zoom out, okay, I can work with that. I'm, you know, yeah, it's not perfect, but at the same time, it doesn't look too much like a clone, if you know what I mean. Like this area here, I can do a little bit with um, this second tool. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's more symmetrical. That area looks like it's coming from directly behind the mountain. All I have to do is create, click this lasso tool. And what I'm gonna do with the lasso tool is I'm gonna select this area here. And it might even be just like this area here, just this bit here I wanna maybe maybe just tidy it up a little bit. And I'm gonna to go to edit. And now this is where you have to have the newer version of Photoshop um, because it doesn't allow you in the older version to, it will just say fill and stroke. The new version says allow content aware fill. So let's click on content aware fill and it's gonna open up the areas around here that, it, it's, that will fill in this space. So now if I have a look to the right, just in this section here, that is what Photoshop is predicting my content aware fill will look like. But what I want to do is I want to give, tell Photoshop to sample more sections of this image, use more of these pixels. So up here in the top right, I have this ability to hit plus and I'm just going to tell Photoshop, you can include pixels from around here. Yep. I'm going to let you have some of these pixels here. You know, you know what? And I'm going to look how, to, how that starts to create the fill. And at each time that I select more of the green, you'll notice that it starts to change what's going on here. Now, I might even choose to subtract some of the pixels. So don't take any of this stuff here. Have a look at it. Yeah, it's starting to look a little more interesting. Don't take any of this stuff here. Let's have a look at it. Okay, it's starting to like, it's starting to just ease out a little bit. And I feel like that's what I want with this. Don't take any of this stuff here. I can zoom in. Sorry if it's like, don't take any of this stuff here. Don't take any of this stuff here. Also, if you want to change the size of this um, up here, over here, up here in the top left, you can just make sure that your selection tool is smaller. So I really don't want any of this stuff by the hand. Um, and now we'll have a look at it. Okay, I'm pretty stoked with that. Looks like my battery's got 4%, but I'm pretty stoked with that. So I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice now that I've created, if I hit command D, I've created this patch. So it's just a little bit more blurred. It looks a little bit more lifelike. It doesn't look so, you know, that looks legit. So there's two tools, major key, content aware move, content aware fill. And now basically I've just realigned the sun, the shadows and the, the clouds look fairly normal and natural. Um, I'm gonna export this, file, export, save for web. Um, this is gonna save as a JPEG. I'm gonna save it as the maximum resolution JPEG. You'll see the quality in there. Looks pretty freaking good. Uh, save, I'm gonna call this um, Peter underscore dope. Desktop, save. And then I'm gonna go back into Lightroom. So let's open Lightroom up again and let's import that photo. There it is. Take those videos off and let's import that. Okay. So importing this file, let's develop it. So now we're back into Lightroom. I've got an aligned sun and I'm gonna add a, another edit to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to these presets that I've already created. If you guys wanna grab this preset pack, I've got six presets in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, they're available in the description of this video. You guys can pick them up um, and that was, that'd be a great way to support me. If you don't want them, don't worry about it. Just create your own presets yourself. But I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna use, I think, I'm gonna make two edits for him. I'm gonna go with the Moody Mountains. I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna then just tweak this a little bit and I'm gonna export it and then I'll, you know, I'll show you where we get to.
guys, that's it. If you have enjoyed this video, do punch the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for Peter for you know giving me this image and reaching out and asking for some help. Um, it's, I'm always happy to help and I hope this has provided more of you guys with some insights as to how you can use Lightroom and Photoshop to create some really cool content. Uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed it, punch the thumbs up button. Check out more of my GoPro content, which is in the description below and up here in the cards. And I'll see you guys in the next upload. JR. Peace.